Hi everyone, so uh, I'm actually here after um, after the yes, yeah, after the rain. So I'm actually making a new video today uh, on my off day. Yeah, this is actually the only off day of my week. So I thought it's just good to actually make some content and create some content. Yeah, just to load it up and to hopefully that will help give some insight. So uh, today I'm actually making a video about. Um, the spiritual aspects and uh, yeah, spiritual and emotional aspects tied to narcissistic abuse and I actually uh, I'm actually entitling this video um, your spiritual yeah your reliance on spiritual um, <coughs> gurus and sources outside uh, inside in during and after narcissistic abuse okay let me just repeat that one more time your reliance on spiritual sources during slash or or um, after narcissistic abuse so okay why do I actually um, make this video why am I making this video yeah uh, I'm not sure if everyone has the same experience as me but uh, I think that this was actually in response to something that Dr. Ramani Devasula, who one of the more well-known uh, YouTubers in the area of narcissistic abuse has actually drawn attention to that uh, she actually uh, was responding to something that was said <coughs> that when people are going through a narcissistic, a narcissistic relationship uh, when they feel abused and uh, when uh, even after they have left there's this tendency for some of them to actually uh, do certain things like consulting a, you know like an alleged professional psychic or some tarot card readers and you know like those fortune tellers and I know that this is not something that everyone does I mean mo most of us I mean coming from the Christian background uh, would try not to do it because even if it's not uh, empowered by some, you know, some evil spirits or or devils or whatever. I mean, the the idea of actually tapping into the spiritual to try to use it for our own ends can be quite disastrous. So, uh, but I think that the reason why a lot of us do that, like, I mean, to actually consult a psychic or a tarot card reader or fortune teller while we are still in the narcissistically abusive relationship or even after that uh, a lot of it boils down to a lot of insecurity in, within us uh, we do not trust ourselves enough to be the source of knowledge or revelation about what is right and what is wrong in that relationship or yeah we don't just trust we don't just, just we just don't trust in ourselves enough so we actually end up giving our power away to another person and in fact it's actually quite dangerous uh, from my experience uh, okay uh, let me just give you a little bit of a uh, just a, maybe like a very general description of my experiences with this okay um, the experiences that I had with uh, alleged professional psychics uh, there were at least three three different yeah three different different ex experiences okay uh, one was actually via a friend yeah a friend who was into astrology his uh, good friend who was a you know like a alleged professional psychic who could do psychic channeling yeah there's a lot of this, all this thing about mediumship and everything so uh, you know at one point in time there was this claim um, I don't think that they really meant it in a very bad way to they, because they didn't tell me to get into the the, the narcissistic relationship and to begin with uh, at one point in time um, the I think before we I even started that last narcissistic relationship back in 2016 um, sometime before that in 2015 uh, when I just got to know the that last uh, abusive uh, ex that um, the that friend of mine actually did a psychic uh, channeling with his other friend 
who's an alleged professional psychic. So the thing about all this psychic channeling, okay, for those who don't know what they do, uh, there's this claim or belief that they have that there's a so-called psychic self out there in the, self, the you know the astral realm. So um, it's like our thoughts, our whatever, our beings are out there, our souls. Uh, that's what they believe, at least in the in in the in the, re in the realm of uh, psychic channeling. So, um, my friend was saying that uh, you know, if I were to do this for you and together with the you know, let's say, my friend who's who's uh, actually a professional psychic. Um, okay, while while there'll be a lot of like playing between, um, like a kind of role playing between you, uh, as in we'll we assume your character your you know the spiritual realm and uh, even the character of that that ex yeah so and 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 uh, i had a joke once uh, are you are you going to sound like this this different these people <laughs> uh your will your voice change uh no, he said no 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 he that would be scary uh but according to what my friend told me then he said oh but you know that uh while this happens we might actually end up assuming characteristics like your characteristics or the other person's characteristics so um, the first experience you know after that happened my friend just told me immediately you know what I don't think you should get you should get into this 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 so-called relationship or, or, or just try to pursue anything because it looks like that you're talking to someone who is uh, you're talking about someone who's actually emotionally unavailable but unfortunately I don't think that even his friend, okay, uh, uh, this girl who was a uh, the alleged professional psychic. She didn't get it correct. It's not that that ex was actually emotionally unavailable, okay? Because if you think about it, all narcissists are not emotionally unavailable. It's not that they can be available, but they choose not to because that's not what they want, okay? They just want supply. And supply is not the same as love or a relationship, okay? A real romantic relationship. So whatever, you know, it uh, doesn't matter who that person is. But um, okay, but that, that's one thing. But but okay, the second the second experience that was the you know in relation to trying to get so-called alleged psychics to to sort of decipher your dreams and everything. So you know, I was very bugged by. Um, a particular dream that I had that was linked to the to the that last ex because uh, you know that was one I'm not gonna actually give the details of what happened uh, as in what what caused it and all stuff but there was a dream that I had that was related and my friend asked me was that sexual <laughs> and I said no no that wasn't sexual but uh, it was kind of like scary in some on some level of uh, you know like it's I I had a I had that like a dream of a, a black box but the, you know the around the keyhole of that black box. Uh, there were all these coils, yeah, metallic golden coils around that hole but as the, the black box was laid, laid before me it started unwinding, yeah, the coils started unwinding and then eventually the box opened I, when I saw into the contents of the box, it was all pitch black darkness but uh, that darkness, you know, the, the strange thing was that in that sequence that narcissistic act fell into the darkness and then that was like the end of the dream i just i can't remember what i actually saw after that but uh you know i spent time trying to you know um decipher it you know when actually when you know you don't feel secure you don't know what is going on you even end up doing stuff like paying to have a so-called psychic reading online of that dream but you know what guess what that that so-called alleged psychic online told me oh um you know you should consider dating that person or whoever you know I mean and even if it might not be the one for you like uh, that relationship might not be the one that for meant for you what 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 person in the right mind would tell you to actually do that kind of stuff based on a dream okay and I mean if you look at it this way now I now in retrospect look looking back on the dream I think that it was more like a dream telling me to be careful because uh, you know like these kind of dreams like they I mean narcissists bring out your your shadow your darkness and And I think that 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 dream was telling me that you know that that particular person that particular ex Will bring out your shadow and darkness if you don't actually feel um, Face it and and in fact the, the, the whole thing about them falling in 
is already telling me that you know what I'm actually in deep deep shit deep trouble <laughs> deep trouble literally because they're gonna give you that big black box of darkness yeah <clears throat> it's not it's not a gift yeah it's not really a gift so um, you know the thing is this I, I used to tell one friend that uh, for as long as I can remember since young I had I had a tendency to actually experience certain like pre-cognitive dreams that you know when I see them they really happen you know that was what happened with uh, the thing that happened to my granny when she she fell in 2014 and I, I didn't know what happened but uh, I mean because I was overseas then but she fell hit the head had a you know blood clot which eventually cleared but it kind of affected her and uh, but like years before I even before I even knew of that before it that even happened that was in Canada I think around when I was still living there yeah 2008 2009 I had a dream about something happening to her and I woke up and then from that dream having you know that kind of thing but of course you know my when I told my you know my advisor who's a who's a god, god bless her she's really really good person she just said uh, although she's not a Christian and everything she said um, you know Kevin this kind of dreams uh, dreams whatever dreams you have or whatever happening to your family don't take it seriously hard and she was quoting to me from the nun's priest tale <laughs> uh, yeah I think the nun's priest tale and uh, Chaucer Chaucer's Canterbury tales about this uh, you know like she said oh just take a laxative and go to bed and you'll be fine <laughs> okay that that was that was our exact advice but uh, okay but, but, but back to the whole thing about that, that psychic experience okay the third I mean this second one was crazy and I told my friend that I wasted money but the third one was the worst because uh, I didn't even give her any money but she gave me fucking screwed up advice like this this lady by the name of uh, Jenny the Gypsy yeah yeah it's so ridiculous she can't even spell Gypsy correctly She's uh, she spelled Gypsy as G -E -G -Y -P -S -E -E on her website so yeah Jenny the Gypsy it's like I met uh, this particular um, alleged psychic who can so-called read auras and and, and and feel people by touching them and and know what they're going through and you know about the strange things at this new age fair I went with my friend uh, who was actually he was actually yeah, very open-minded as an agnostic uh, like person who's a seeker but he's not really trying to you know like, identify with any particular religion so me being the person that I am uh, when I was actually in that stage where I was trying to search for answers trying to heal after I had been discarded yeah that was in 2018 I actually remember that that particular lady kept on doing cold reading by you know bombard cold reading is when someone bombards you non-stop with a keyword a question or like just just not just one but like loads and loads of it to overwhelm you and it's often to actually uh, hope in the hope that they will actually you actually picked up on the on that question answer at least a few of them and you give them the answers <laughs> uh, and and the thing is all these cold reading is always by throwing one very vague or general word at you so uh, that was what she did she kept on throwing stuff you know and and, and after throwing stuff she was like making uh, suggestions about who I was who I was trying to control and uh, I mean she was trying to control me yeah who I was and trying to tell me oh I'm actually what I am and what I should do and it just makes you realize uh, if they are really the so-called you know like professional psychics that they are why the fuck okay is are they even telling you how you should behave and everything is like it seems so manipulative and so co coercive yeah coercive is coercion literally emotionally i mean do not physically but yeah it's emotionally coercion and she came on saying certain things and <coughs> when i told that you know talk, going back and talking to that friend who did the psychic channeling years ago for me I told him and then he said, oh, you know what, she sounds like a fake because to begin with, uh, he said, oh, you know, in the New Age community or in the so-called psychic community, there's this agreement that you're not supposed to tell someone's future for them. There's no such thing called telling the future. You do not fix it because anything can change. You just tell them about their tendencies or their patterns. And, and he said, you know what, for her to do that, that so-called Jenny, she's probably fake. Because she keeps on doing this cold and hot. She was doing cold reading and hot reading, and I mean the the whole thing is this. Um, okay, hot reading is based on what they have done research on. They just do that thing. They implant the ideas in you. Um, okay, what what do I say that? Okay, the reason why I'm actually talking about these three experiences is this. You know, when you're feeling insecure, you're gonna actually turn away your power and give it to someone else, and. You, 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 I mean the best, the best person you probably end up thinking of who can help you is probably someone who is in the spiritual 
I mean, spiritual realm, like it could be something like uh, someone like a psychic. Uh, if not a psychic, it could be like a priest or religious leader or whoever. I mean, depending on what you believe in. And the problem is this. You know that most of these people, they don't even freaking know you. They, they, they claim that they know you or they'll tell you, oh, you know what, you're like that, like this, like your dad. But, I mean, to begin with, they don't even know you. And how much do you trust to let someone else like control your future or even your present? You don't want to do that because uh, it's actually quite dangerous. And can you imagine the things they can tell you to do? Like let's say, oh, you know, if uh, you get into this kind of... My, my friend actually who was listening uh, when he was actually at that new age fair, listening to what Jenny told me, he said, Kevin, can you imagine what would have happened if you have blindly followed that, that, that Jenny to listen to us, her advice about uh, certain things like, uh, oh, you know, just experience what sexuality in certain ways and whatever and and uh, without any uh, responsibilities about, you know, like it's, it's really dangerous and that's the problem. You actually, we actually entrust our future, our own self into the hands of strangers whom we barely even know. We shouldn't be doing that, okay? Not even if the person claims to be like a priest or, psych or psychic or whatever, whatever religious figure they are, okay? Uh, you know, like right now, I mean, if you, even you, let's say, okay, I'm, I'm not, I don't think it'll happen, but let's just say that something like an angel or, or someone who was like, oh, claims to be uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ or whoever just comes down and right, appears right in front of me and tells me to do this thing. I will, I'll, be, I will question that, 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 that person twice be, uh, or more than that because to begin with, uh, if the person is telling me to do something that is actually immoral, immoral or unethical, I mean, or something that's going, going to actually hurt me, I don't care whether the person is actually, you know, like uh, appearing the person of Jesus Christ or the angel because uh, we know that it's just basically a form of manipulation. So um, if we can do this for, let's say, like people, like strangers, we shouldn't be doing that with, I mean, we shouldn't be like, you know, so trust, word, trust yeah, just trusting towards psychics. And I think that Dr. Ramani was actually, he, she hit the camera on the nail because she was talking about the fact that a lot of us actually and uh, we feel very insecure and very unsure and uncertain about ourselves and that's why we end up going to like all these psychics and ever whatever and i'm not going to speculate about where they get their so-called you know abilities or powers or whatever from uh, maybe some of them really you know they mean well and they you know but but it's very foolish to actually just throw your, you know, faith, your lot and your faith in with these people and say, oh, okay, you know what, this person is going to help me. I'll just believe in whatever he or she tells me. And then I'll probably even surrender like money. Yeah, money is a very important thing. And just surrender money, some stupid cold reading. Ah, <laughs> uh, no way. Okay. So I hope that no one does this. Like, don't, don't, don't follow in my footsteps. And I mean, this is really, I mean, I'm very thankful. Like when I was talking about this to... Uh, that friend who does astrology, he just asked me, do you pay money to that, uh, you know, Jenny, that psychic, that, or that alleged psychic? Uh, no, I didn't pay her any money. I didn't even get her to get any reading. She was just trying to be a smart aleck or some, some stupid smart ass woman thinking that she knows everything uh, at the, you know, New Age Fair. So, uh, yeah, and after that, I obviously threw away most of the brochures and everything because it's all a bunch of bullshit anyway. Uh, yeah, it's a, a load of nonsense and BS. So anyway, um, yeah, it's kind of misty and uh, at least it looks very unclear. Maybe the phone is not really working that well right now and it's turning dark. Uh, but uh, uh, okay, yeah, that's it for now. And I really just hope that everyone remembers this. Your sense of your, your, your grasp, your grip on truth and revelation or even on what the situation is in the narcissistic situation or the relationship. It is ultimately up to you. You have to be the one to recognize it. You can't actually get someone to tell you what you are in that relationship. Not a psychic especially or not a religious figure because I'm not I'm not saying that uh, you, you're going to be an atheist but I mean I'm not an atheist but the thing is this. Never tell someone to never let someone tell you to stay in a relationship or to leave it. Uh, you have to make that choice for yourself. And to begin with, to even make a choice to leave, you have to recognize it first. You are the one who is actually responsible for it. Not someone like a whatever, alleged psychic, whatever, who is not even 
aware of what you're going through. They don't even understand your struggles. They only care about your money. It's like, goodness, how much do they charge? Like, I know that Jenny charges like 120 and above. She's such a liar about everything. And uh, of course, I didn't get her to get a reading. But you think about it, now with all this inflation, she's probably making more, she's going to make more money by actually charging more. Uh, she's a real scam and a fraud. And, and the thing is this, you know that in uh, Canada, back in Canada, um, this, this kind of action that, that is committed by all these so-called psychics can be charged and prosecuted legally for, I mean, under the clause of pretending to be a witch. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a form of fraud, actually, in North, I, I know, at least know in, uh, I think in the USA, to actually demand so much. Uh, but here in Singapore, no one does that because everyone is like getting, I mean, I would say that although this, everyone is kind of like secular, secularized or modernized now, but um, there's still a very strong sentiment of, uh, you know, superstition among some people. And some people actually think that this actually works uh, because of obviously the brainwashing done by the New Age movement and everything. And honestly, you know, even if you're clairvoyant, you wouldn't be charging money to to do that because that's called fleecing the innocent okay and the susceptible people in the population i wouldn't do that i mean not even if i have ability to do that okay so uh anyway uh, i hope everyone has a good night and i'm actually going to go off uh, and that's it for now okay so yeah remember don't place your power in the hands of someone else you have the power to decide what you want to do in the relationship if you want to discard the narcissist, you want to leave the narcissist, make that choice for yourself. Okay, don't rely on a psychic to make those choices for you. Okay, or not even or even a, like a religious figure. Okay, okay, that's it now for now. Bye bye.